You have a great website. Let's make sure people see it. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, dear participants, uh, I would request you to please let me know in the comment section that uh, are you able to listen my voice clearly or is there any issue? Thank you very much Burhan Khan and Azanish Bhatt. Thank you very much. Uh, we will wait for just three or four more minutes and after that inshallah we will start our webinar. So before that if you have any question or any comment I am I'm just doing it live so I can see your comments I can read these and of course I will try my level best to answer these questions if you have any. Uh, one more thing I would like to add right now is that uh, while I'll be delivering, delivering this lecture or we are going through this webinar, I think it would be really impossible for me to manage these things on my own. So I will be focusing more on delivering the lecture or discussing the key points first and after that I will give you time to ask questions if anybody wants to ask any question right now i i am not turning on my camera because uh, we are not uh, starting it inshallah at 8 we will start it uh, maham khan can i ask questions related to neurophysio yes you can but not in this webinar i i don't recommend you to ask such questions because this webinar is totally focused towards the x-ray basics so i have tried to compile some facts in in this short presentation to help you understand that what are the important parameters for the physical therapist or for any rehab professional or any healthcare professional to consider before ordering an x-ray and what to look for so i believe this is going to be uh, a useful webinar for all of you or for all of the participants that are going to attend this webinar so people are 
saying that they are having difficulty in I don't know why they are having this difficulty in attending the webinar I think it's it's really very easy so let's log out the whatsapp from here because <laughs> it's going to be very annoying because there's a continuous bing 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 and I don't like it much I would like to thank all of the participants who have joined me who have joined my whatsapp group and they are from various countries especially uh, my friends are from from Iraq and from Bangladesh and from various other countries like uh, a few people have joined from Philippines as well so I'm thankful for your respect and your comments that you have sent me online and through various portals and I will try my level best to to you know answers all the queries and questions that you have so let's start with today's webinar bismillah rahman rahim first of all being a muslim it is uh, important for us to remember islam in every part of our life so we will start our lecture with a hadith sharif that says that khairun nas man yanfa'un nas the best among you is the one who benefits people so i i will try to benefit all of you and i will try to benefit others and i request all of you to benefit others now today's webinar is about the x-ray basics and my brief introduction is that my name is dr sayed ali hussain i am a physiotherapist by profession i am doing phd from tehran university of medical sciences iran and uh, my coursework is about to be finished after that my research work will start so I have more than 11 years of clinical experience and as well as academic experience uh, I've been teaching radiology from past almost three years and since the start I was very much inclined towards learning radiology because it was a very important tool in our kit in our physiotherapist possession that we can use to to differentially diagnose our patients and to definitely uh, reach a definitive diagnosis so for this I, I just wanted to share my knowledge uh, from like past 10 or 11 years that I the, the facts that I've gathered with all of you as pro bono and I just want all of you to learn this and you can ask me anything at all anything you like so to start with we must understand that there is something that is called radiation and it is part of the electromagnetic spectrum we are all aware of the word radiation and radiation safety and radiation hazards so there are two types of radiations one is called as the ionizing radiation and the other is called as the non-ionizing radiation now if we talk about the non-ionizing radiations they have very little energy as compared to the ionizing radiations and they does not remove electrons from atoms or molecules of material that include air water and living tissue why we are discussing these materials like air water and living tissue because when the radiations they pass through human body or through these tissues they cause ionization and this phenomena is very clear that these ionizing radiations they create ions in the body and we are going to show it in the next slides so here you can see in the electromagnetic spectrum we have non-ionizing radiations which are displayed in green color as well as the ionizing radiation which are displayed in the red color so they are having high energy whereas the non-ionizing one have low energy 
Now the ionizing has high energy as compared to the non-ionizing radiations and they remove electrons from atoms and molecules of materials that include air, water and living tissue as well. Now this is very important here you can see an atom and atom when it is striked by the ionizing radiation it has created a positive as well as a negative ion. So if we replay it let's say now we need to go back and run this slide again here you can see an atom which is electrically neutral like it has no charge but when it is striked by the ionizing radiation it is converted into a positive ion and a negative ion. So this cation and N ion they are basically a threat to the stability of the internal environment of the body and hence comes the hazards of the ionizing radiation. Now this is really very important to understand that there are some man-made sources of ionizing radiation that includes x-rays, CT scans, PET scans, fluoroscopy and nuclear medicine procedures. All of these these are the sources of ionizing radiation that man created. And the natural source of ionizing radiation is called radon. And here you can see this, this radon is having the atomic number and everything written in front of you. So this is a naturally occurring ionizing radiation source. And it is uh, almost abundant everywhere in the world even in our houses uh, you can find the radon survey online to see which part of the world or which part of any country has the most radon levels now this causes especially this causes lung cancer so one of the threat that ionizing radiation has on the human body is that it can cause various types of cancers and mutations Talking about the X-rays, they are classified as being the ionizing radiation. Then they are considered to be the gold standard to assess bones and bony injuries. The, they are considered to be the investigation of choice for most of the musculoskeletal conditions. They are very cost and time effective as compared to the rest of the modalities. But this is very important to understand and remember the fact that they need clinical correlation to make a diagnosis. In this clinical correlation, you need the biomechanics or the mechanism of injury to help you make a definitive diagnosis. For example, if a person falls on an outstretched hand, so what type of injury can occur to the shoulder or to the wrist or to the elbow or if somebody is sitting into a car and the car got hit by another car from the front and then there can be a dashboard injury so what was the event that caused an injury can also help you understand the radiographs so this is really very important that you cannot make whole diagnosis or the sole diagnosis just on the basis of radiographs but you can make the diagnosis in combination with or keeping in view the clinical correlation or the biomechanics of injury. It can be misleading if you don't know the normal anatomical variations. For example, I, I recall a condition that is, for example, is called as bipartite patella. That means that naturally or biologically the patella is divided into two halves. So when you make an x-ray of that patella, it seems that this x-ray is showing some fracture or the patella is being fractured. So if you don't know this normal anatomy or the anatomical variation then it can be very misleading. Similarly there is a bone on the posterior aspect of the knee which is called as the fibella and this bone can be considered as myositis ossificans or it can be considered as an avulsion fracture or it can be considered as something else or any pathology any fun body but in reality it is a sesamite bone which is called as the fibella so if you don't know the normal anatomical variations it can be the radiographs can be very misleading now these terms are really very easy to understand 
radiopaque or sometimes called as the radio opaque tissue these are the objects or tissues that appear more whiter so why they appear more whiter because they absorb more radiations and hence they appear white on to the radiograph so opacity stands for some white tissue or white structure whereas the lucency radio lucent it it shows any object that appears more blackish because it absorbs less radiation so these two words are very important for us to remember when we are going to identify any structure or any tissue onto the x rays we are going to say that this is radio opaque or this is radio lucent now it is important again every part of this lecture is really very important so i i i must emphasize on you to remember these facts that radiology or the x ray is imaging of any three dimensional structure on two dimensional surface that you will get x axis and y axis dimensions on a radiograph but you will not get the z axis dimension because this is not a 3d there is a ct scan that is 3d reconstructed there is an mri which is 3d reconstructed but for x rays it is just 2d construction of any image or it is just uh, you are imaging any structure which is in reality 3d but you are converting that into 2d on an x ray so therefore it may be necessary to take multiple views hence if we want to look for the depth or the, de the detail of the tissue we need to look to the other side as well so therefore it may be necessary to take multiple views of the same area from different angles for example if you suspect any fracture and to gain a full understanding of an injury you need to go for like ap and lateral view or oblique view or some other view describing densities densities are playing a very important role when any structure becomes more dense it will become more radio opaque it will become more white and when any structure is less dense it will become radio lucent like black so contrast within the overall image depends on differences in both the density of the structure in the body and the thickness of so the density and the thickness these two parameters are deciding upon the contrast of the image or the shadow or the shade of that structure onto the radiograph so the greater the difference in either density or the thickness of two adjacent structures it leads to greater contrast between the two structures so it means that these densities are creating some relative impressions upon the radiograph so hence we can say let's say bone is more radio opaque as compared to uh, fat so this is because the bone has higher density and the fat has less density but if the amount of fat is much or more as compared to the bone then the fat will appear whiter and the bone will appear relatively blacker as compared to the fat so this concept is going to be discussed inshallah in the next slide for descriptive purposes there are five different densities that you need to understand and these include low density material such as air which is represented as black on the final radiograph very dense material such as metal or contrast material is represented as white and bodily tissues are varying degrees of gray depending upon their densities and their thickness so here you can see that air is jet black and fat is relatively grayish as compared to air or we can say fat is radio opaque as compared to the air and soft tissues are radio opaque as compared to the fat and bone is radio opaque as compared to the soft tissue and metal is radio opaque as compared to the bone and vice versa so either you can compare it with the most blackish part or the most whitish part so it depends on you that you which relative term you would like to to see and to discuss so if you have any Uh, problem up till now if if you are getting my voice clearly we can proceed i need your comments in the comment section is everything fine and okay okay thank you 
Now here you can see the effect of thickness on radiographic opacity. Now increasing the thickness of the object in path of the X-ray beam, it will reduce the number of incident rays that can penetrate or pass through that object and reach to the receiver, especially the cassettes and the image will be more radiopaque under thicker parts of the object or the patient. So here you can see that by increasing the thickness of the tissue, less X-ray beams are or the X-ray waves, they will pass through that tissue and the tissue will appear white. And when the more X-ray beam will pass through the tissue, then it will appear as blackish or radiolucent. So radiopaque and radiolucent. In this slide, we are looking at two structures and their impression onto the radiographs. On the left side, we are looking at the bone and on the right side, we are looking at the fat. But if you see the thickness of the fat is much more as compared to the thickness of the bone. So the fat is now appearing radio opaque as compared to bone and the bone is appearing as radio lucent. So in this slide, what we are looking at is that how the thickness of any tissue is affecting the opacities or lucencies onto the radiograph. So this is important to understand that sometime there can be relative thickness and for example a person is way too much obese and is fatty. So in that patient or person the x-ray appearance will be different as compared to the other normal person or a slim person. Now here you can see the four natural tissue densities that can be very easily detected and seen onto this radiograph which is a chest PA radiograph. This chest PA radiograph is telling us four different type of densities and it is important to remember that first of all you should try to see what structures are there normally in that region and you need to identify those structures onto that radiograph. So for example, uh, let's go to the next slide and see. Here we can see these, for example, air, air is jet black. So why it is jet black? Because no X-rays are being absorbed by the air and it is appearing as radio, radio lucent. Okay, fat, fat over here is this portion. So, and this portion also. So fat is radio opaque as compared to the air, which is radio lucent. Then soft tissues, the impression of soft tissue over here is not very good, but in the later images, I'm going to show you the soft tissue appearance on the radiograph. So the soft tissues, they appear a bit more uh, grayish and then the bones, they a bit more white and then the bones, they appear a bit more white. So radio opaque, most radio opaque tissue is the bone. Over here, the ribs and the clavicle, the scapula and the vertebras. Now, if you think there is an abnormal structure in X-ray, try describing it in terms of density. For example, ask yourself whether the density is increased or decreased or whether this, this is normal as compared to the other structure or whether this is abnormal, but try to use the word radio opaque or radio lucent. Over here, we are looking at these two shadows. This is too dark and this is too light or too bright. So radio lucent and radio opaque. So this is important to use while you are trying to interpret the X-rays. Now, let's take 
a short exam so please can you send a comment that right now this part of the bone whether this is radio opaque or radio lucent where my cursor is yes yes it is radio opaque and which part is radio lucent in this radiograph where my cursor is right now which structure you need to tell me which part or which structure is radio lucent now yes air between the lungs or the lungs they are radio lucent now one more thing thank you very much one more thing is that something is called as overlap overlap means when two structures are being examined or studied on to the radiograph when they were front and back to each other so because of their positioning their image is being overlapped or their shadow is being overlapped so here we can see the overlap of the clavicle onto the ribs and in the midline the overlap of the sternum and the heart so this part is becoming more radio opaque and this is because of the overlapping structures and one more thing is that you need to remember the fact always remember this fact that if you don't understand the normal orientation or the orientation of the x-rays you cannot interpret correctly so you must be aware of what is the normal orientation of this radiograph for this there will be some markers and for this there will be some things so we will try to see that how we can understand these facts for sure to help us to guide us in making a definitive diagnosis and not missing any important point that we might miss just because of our uh, non systematic approach now like all slides this is again very important slide choose the most appropriate views it's almost always better to make a diagnosis on two views for example ap and lateral don't try to make a diagnosis if you are not sure on one view for example if there is a fracture and it is very obvious of course there is nothing wrong in that but if you are unsure and you are not obvious it and you are not sure it's not obvious that this is either a fracture or it is some some normal let's say uh, lucency or let's say some normal opacity so if you don't know this or sclerosis sclerosis it appears as white line so then you must go for another view and it is important to to look for the other views as well here you can see ap and pa view now i want you to see the difference between these two like in the ap the heart comes the first and then there is lung and the mediastinum and the back so this is the anterior posterior view which is not a recommended view if you want to look for lungs or normal inflation of the lungs or if you want to assess any other structure that is related to lungs for lungs the preferred view is the pa view posto anterior and this is a full inspiration view so it means that after the patient has taken full inspiration he hold his breath for certain period of time and then the radiographer has taken the x rays and then this is called as a full inspiratory view and this is a pa view and when we see the pa view the lungs can be seen first and then the cardiac shadow but in the ap view the cardiac shadow is seen first and then the lungs so this shadow is also called as the cardiac silhet so cardiac silhet is telling us the cardiac size so for example if somebody has just mistaken it for this this the left radiograph as 
the PA view and he has seen this and he say oh my god this is this is the cardiomegaly and the patient is going to die maybe he is suffering from the CCF maybe this is the same image of uh, maybe this is the image of the same guy just taken from the other perspective and then it could have changed the whole perspective so the cardiac silhouette or the cardiac shadow can be misleading if you are not taking the right view into the consideration and here you can see these are markers we, which are very important to remember so this is L stand for left and when it is left it means that this is left side of the body and this is right side of the body so it is taken from the front and the cassette was placed back here again uh, this side is left and this is right so on this side this this was the back side and this was the front side so you can clearly see and sometime on the radiograph it is written that this is a PA view or AP view as well and you can also confirm this from your patient that how uh, he was standing now these rule of two are very important to remember being uh, a student of radiology or a teacher of radiology I found these rules to be very useful throughout my professional life and academic life as well and I, I stress all of you that you should bear in mind these rules always because these rules they they are ruling the radiographs okay if you go for any radiograph you must bear in mind that these rules are very important for us to consider the first rule is two views and I've added almost all the possible x-rays or the radiographs to show you the importance of these rules why these rules are important these are called the rules of two so the first rule is two views that is the reason people say that go for an x-ray AP and lateral view or PA and lateral view or oblique view or let's say uh, axial view or skyline view or any special view at all or weight bearing or non weight bearing view so it means that we need at least two views why because we we need to recall the fact that an x-ray is basically a 2d image of a 3d object so we if we need to add the third dimension we definitely need two views so ap and lateral view in this radiograph on the left hand side we are missing some pathology we are saying okay it's looking fairly normal but as soon as we are going to see the same structure into the lateral view we can see clearly that there is a dislocation and this is a massive dislocation but it cannot be seen onto the left side which is AP view but as soon as we move towards the lateral view we can easily identify the pathology so the second rule is two joints here you can see a Montagia fracture and dislocation so it in this fracture there is the fracture of proximal ulnar shaft with the dislocation of the radial head so you can see over here that the radius is being dislocated and there is the fracture of the shaft of the ulna so we should always see one joint above and one joint below the pathology and this is again a rule of thumb to examine because sometimes there are some problems or there are some uh, injuries as well that are caused by that and that can be missed very easily so two views and two joints this rule must be remembered then two abnormalities they say if you have found one abnormality on radiograph always try to look for the second abnormality so two views two joints two abnormalities so these are very easy to remember because everywhere you'll you'll remember it like two 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 so two views two joints two abnormalities two abnormalities here you can see for example there's a fracture of the table plateau and this is saltararis type 2 which is for uh, epiphyseal injuries so or growth plate injuries and the second injury is that we are looking at the fracture of the shaft or the proximal part of the fibula and being a physical therapist it is very important for us to to remember that here is the point where there is the common peroneal nerve and it may cause foot drop yes uh, Hassan Nakwi has asked us a question that sir such huge differences in is really possible on two views yes one view is 
too few they say one view is too few so <laughs> it is always less so remember that uh, we might miss the pathology if it is not uh, seen in two views because if you recall the initial slides i told you that we need to correlate the clinical examination along with the radiographs of course uh, i i would request all of you to save your questions for the end once we are done with the uh, this presentation then i'll take your questions and i'll try to answer them okay then two sides it is important to compare two sides especially in the children if you are not sure about the secondary ossification centers or the growth centers in the children then of course you you might not be able to 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 differentiate whether this is a normal or a pathological tissue for example here you can see that this was a suspected avulsion fracture of the right medial epicondyle which in reality is a ossification center which is a secondary ossification center right? you you can search the word cretol or creto that tells us that first the c stand for the capitulum that the first bone to ossify is the capitulum or the first secondary ossification center to ossify is the uh, capitulum then the radius and then internal epicondyle then trochlea then olecranon and then the lateral epicondyle so this is the sequence normal sequence of the ossification of the bones at this region or these are secondary ossification centers at the elbow region so we might think that this is an avulsion fracture but in reality it is not avulsion fracture and children's radiographs are almost always very misleading because their bones they are not fully developed so you must compare the sound side with the affected side just to make sure that you are not missing any pathology then sometime it is said that two views are too many this is another rule two views too many it means that for example if a patient comes to you and here on the left side you have seen that there is a depressed fracture of his skull so in this depressed fracture we might just only think that okay it's just a depressed fracture but because uh, this is important to remember that for any head injury ct scan is considered to be the gold standard so two views too many it means that even if you go for ap and lateral view you still cannot see something and there are chances that you miss it so you need to go for the other modality which is ct and when they did the ct scan they have seen a big hematoma which was intracranially present then two occasions they say that the best radiograph is the old radiograph the previous radiograph is the best radiograph why because you can compare the progress or the progression of any disease or any pathological process so with past for example uh, in today's uh, like clinical practice uh, a female patient comes to me and i have seen three of her radiographs one was taken 7 years ago the the second was taken almost 2 years ago and the third was taken just recently one month ago so i have compared the progress of her scoliosis from past 7 years till today so it was telling me how these 7 or 8 years have affected her scoliosis and what is the angulation or what was the angulation 7 years ago and what is the angulation today the cobs angle so we can of course make a judgment or make a diagnosis or make some uh, decision on the basis of these radiographs so two occasions maybe this is an x-ray of a patient who has developed some problem before uh, let's say atelectasis that there was collapse of the lung and now it has gone so we can compare this from it is just like uh, you can also compare the progress of the patient so two occasions so similarly like for example if somebody is gotten fracture so after reduction of the fracture you can go for before and after two visits again one visit is compared with the another visit so we can also see in this uh, rule we are looking at two visits rule so it means that on first visit and second visit maybe if you want to see for the callus formation or anything else you can see for two visits this is also a rule two investigations two investigations when you are not sure about the definitive diagnosis and the patient is still complaining that he or she is having the same problem or there are signs of inflammation or edema or pain or tenderness and things like that then you can 
मे बी यू कैन से दैट ओके माई मोडेलिटी विच आई चूज वॉज एक्स रे एंड दिस इज नॉट सोफिस्टिकेटेड इनाफ और इट कैन नॉट यू नो गेट इन टू द डिटेल्स ऑफ दैट इंजरी सो लेट्स गो फॉर अ सी टी स्कैन और एन एम आर आई स्कैन टू टू गो फॉर अ बेटर रेजोल्यूशन ऑफ दैट इशू एंड हेयर यू कैन सी इनिशियली इट वॉज सीन दैट द स्केफॉइड इज नॉर्मल बट आफ्टर the ct scan it was revealed that the scaphoid was being fractured so two investigation sometime if you are not sure and your clinical examination is not consistent with your radiographic investigation or your, your radiographic remarks then you can of course uh, you know go for the other modality as well there is no specific duration between two visits uh, it depends on your sound clinical judgment okay so two opinions and two records and two specialists two opinions you can take opinion from your friend that please look at this radiograph and tell me whether i'm missing it or not and then it can be discussed with another professional as well that you can discuss this with some other professional like radiographer or orthopedic or neuro and someone else this is how we can interpret or how we can assess the radiograph systematically which is called as abc's of the systematic assessment this is the most commonly used and widely used system for the assessment of plane radiographs and it is true for the peripheral as well as the axial skeleton the abc for the bony skeleton are the same although from an interpretive point of view when we are trying to interpret when we are not just assessing if we are assessing we need to follow a b c and then s but when we are interpreting we can change the order as well so for example for while we are interpreting we can look for the soft tissues first which is s and then we may look for the bones and other structures so both these signs they are very like for example if we are looking for the fat pad sign or lipohematrosis it tells us that there is some fracture so these signs they help us to make a diagnosis so a stand for alignment you must exclude subluxations and dislocations try to see whether the structures are aligned or not for example in this in these two radiograph on the left hand side you can see that the alignment is good there are three lines that one is called as the anterior line the posterior line and the spinal lamellar line all these lines they should be symmetrical but in this case on the right hand side the lines are disturbed which means that the symmetry or the alignment is disturbed it means that there is some problem or pathology on this now b stand for the bony contours and you need to follow the bony contours very carefully and you may exclude a fracture check for the disruption of the trabecular pattern the honeycomb appearance of or the trabecular appearance of the bone and linear sclerosis which is a whiteness or white line that may indicate a fracture so b for bone and so a was for alignment and b was for bone so in this radiograph or in these two radiograph we are looking at the bone and the bones contours are not normal the cortex is not normal and the medulla is also not normal at some parts so this is clearly a fracture and over here is also fracture so you can always remember this that you should follow the entire length of the bone to from one side to the other side and even in between to rule out or rule in the fracture so check for the cartilage and joints c is for cartilage so check for the joint spaces and uneven loss of joint width for example over here we can see the normal joint space in this radiograph whereas there is no joint space like the cartilage which is appearing as black because of different density as compared to the bone and this is again relative density so radio lucent is the cartilage and radio opaque is the bone but here you can see the loss of joint space which means that this is degeneration and most likely osteoarthritis of the knee then for the soft tissues a b c and s s is for soft tissue so bright light x rays and look for foreign bodies so you need to look for the soft tissue appearance in the next radiograph we are going to see the appearance of the soft tissue this is bright appearance or uh, this is relatively bright appearance 
so here radio opacity and this contour is abnormal for the soft tissue it means that there is some swelling which means that there is some sort of injury either it can be a vulgian fracture or some other fracture or subluxation or anything like that and lastly we were trying to see for the foreign bodies or the metals and this these two images they are telling us uh, the radiographs uh, are telling us the total knee arthroplasty so total knee arthroplasty is seen and this metal or this implant is basically the foreign body sometime it can be a bullet or it can be a fragment of a bullet or it can be something else it can be a pin that is uh, left into the skin of a patient and it might overlap and there can be other structures as well so these are the routine views uh, you can see for the elbow ap lateral internal oblique and external oblique views and for wrist PA, lateral, oblique and PA views for hand. Similarly, uh, for the hands, the lateral, oblique and for knee, AP and lateral. And again, intercondylar fossa and this special view is important. This is called as a skyline view. It is for patellofemoral joint. And similarly for ankle, AP and AP oblique. Soft tissue abnormality can be seen by looking at the soft tissue impression. The soft tissue margins can be seen very clearly around the bones. So if the margins are disturbed, you can say that there is some soft tissue swelling or edema present. The routine views for ankle, lateral AP, lateral oblique and then we have for hip, hip AP, hip lateral for TMJ, transcranial and submento vertex. So routine views for the shoulder, AP external rotation, internal rotation for cervical spine, open mouth and lower cervical spine, lateral, right oblique, left oblique and thoracic spine, the AP view. Similarly, we have lateral view, PA view or PA oblique view for the thoracic spine and for, for the sternum as well. for for the pelvis AP view, so for the lumbar spine AP lateral and right and left oblique. These are same for most of the regions. So this is important for us to remember being a clinician or being a physical therapist that the radiation in daily life, so even if we think that we are not exposed to radio hazards or radiations, we, we think it wrong because normally an average person takes annual natural background radiation of about 2. Point millisievert. So this is about one year of exposure from radon gas or from cosmic rays or buildings and blah blah blah. But look at the CT scan which is 6.6 .6, almost you can say twice or two years or three years of uh, natural radiation. But this is important what I'm telling right now because we're not discussing CT scan. What we are discussing is the radio hazard of an X-ray and these values are very important. If you re just recall or write these values, this is 2.4 millisievert okay, per year. So in one year, 2.4 millisievert. And when you take a lumbar spine AP or lateral lumbar film, it makes 2.20 and 1.50 millisievert respectively. It means that if you are taking an AP view of the lumbar spine, you are exposing a person to the same radiation that he is receiving naturally in one year. So please decide upon the most appropriate intervention that you need for radiology and any investigation that is almost, you can say, inevitable, then go for that investigation. Without that, please rely on your sound clinical examination because these are ionizing radiations and they can affect your patient's health as well. Once a patient go for a CT scan, an X-ray or even the nuclear scan, the patient does not become radioactive. So the patient is not omitting radiations, okay? But the patient's body has developed cations and anions, so that may pose some problem to the patient, okay? That is the reason people have after chemotherapy or chemotherapy they have like uh, uh, problems. So these are the references you can uh, 
copy these references or you can take a picture of these references you can download these books very easily you can find these articles you can go to these websites unfortunately radiology is not easy to understand and there are very limited resources but i tried my level best to help you out to help you understand very basic concepts now this is the lights last slide thank you very much if you have any questions you may ask uh, so i'll be closing this presentation and now i'll be taking the whole screen of this and let's let's increase the video i believe you can all of you can see me now so let's lock this and if you have any question right now i'm i'm listening your questions i can answer these questions because we have about 14 to 15 minutes so anything at all dr hasan has asked us how can we judge age of patient from any x ray radiograph uh, well i think there are various factors but especially in children we can uh, you know look for the secondary ossification centers or the centers that have been ossified so these uh, the, these ossification centers they are you know uh, they ossify at different age for, for example for 7 years for 10 years for 12 years so this is one clue and then by looking at the bone structure looking at the uh, epiphyses we can somehow try to conclude or make uh, a definitive you know judgment on the patient's age faryal uh, faryal akhtar has asked us a question what sir what sh should be the minimum time frame between two films normally uh, you know uh, when we are taking two views like ap and lateral view we are doing it on the same day it is not uh, you know absolutely uh, illegal or unethical to take more than two radiographs of a single patient you can of course if you think you might have missed some pathology or you know if if a patient has you know multiple complaints of the shoulder of the knee of the hip you need to go for three radiographs and maybe six views so it is allowed because for for this patient we cannot go for the whole body ct so It, it, i think this is for the referring physician to decide shining star thank you very much it was too informative thank you very much please ask questions first and then go for the comments uh shining star has asked sir i'm not just not getting the point of two visits so for example you know two visits means if if a patient is coming to you for let's say today and he got let's say that you are working with some orthopedic surgeon or orthopedic and he got fracture and like the orthopedic has applied plaster of paris or reduced the fracture and he has told the patient to go home and take calcium and vitamin d3 and come to me after one month now the patient has come to to you or to the orthopedic after one month and you you need to go for a second radiograph because you need to understand whether the bone is you know being uh, healing or not so whether there is callus formation or whether there is some delayed union or non union so for this you need to uh, look for radiographs for two visits adil umar thank you very much uh, it's it's so nice of you that you are commenting all of you thank you very much for your nice comments but if you have any question any question at all from from my presentation or from your radiology you can ask me uh, we still have some time sir can you kindly tell me how to differentiate the, the ap and pa view basically you can if you look for the marker like the labels the left and the right it will also tell you you can ask your patient if you are not sure and secondly the impression of the tissues is really very important if if you look for the impression then i think it will solve your problem then liba how long does x rays stay in one's body and how often we can go for a person's x ray therapy Uh, they they do not stay in the body once they enter through the body they leave through the body and you know they just uh, create cations and anions beyond that nothing so the patient does not become radioactive or they does not you know 
stay permanently in the patient's body and secondly how often again it depends on the clinical question in mind so it is debatable Faiza Batool, what signs can indicate bone is getting brittle in x-ray of a child in growing age? Brittle bones basically, they the bones they become bendy like there is some sort of curvature on the bones and the, the cortex of the bone is totally different as well as the trabecular appearance or the mesh of the bone is not good. So hence you can say that it is becoming uh, like brittle or uh, some other two occasions before and after two times like this is the same two occasions two occasions and two visits two occasions can be before and after immediately before and after two occasions and two visits means once today and maybe next visit two occasions can be different from two visits okay calcium deficiency can be seen from of course it is a relative it is it is something that is relative to the other if you know for example uh, let's say you are comparing the humerus with the femur so relatively you can make a conclusion and this is not a gold standard for this go for the dexa scan and just but if you don't have anything else of course you can rely on this and you can look for the appearance because the appearance or the radio opacity of the bone will be uh, different from the normal and this is just called the training of the eye once you 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 read x-rays like maybe four or five hundred x-rays then you will come to know that this is and there are a lot other factors sometimes there can be under exposure or over exposure so it is debatable so i i must emphasize on this that you should uh, you know, use the most appropriate maneuver or mayor. How much time a comminuted fracture takes? Time to be depending upon the site of the fracture, may take more than six weeks. In APV, where will be the L mark, sir? L is always on the left. Okay, can we determine roughly BMD? Yes, roughly I explained it. Thank you. Changes to watch out for diabetic foot radiograph. Uh, for diabetic foot, I don't think so. That particularly for diabetes, there is some effect onto the bone. But yes, if it is infective, then we can see some bone erosion and bone decay. Okay, so darker the bone, higher the calcium density. Can we state it? No, 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 no. Whiter the bone, the whiter the bone, the calcium content will be higher. Okay, the blacker the bone, the calcium content will be low. Okay, more calcium means more whiteness because calcium is dense and less calcium means uh, blackish. As you said in the cervical radiograph, three straight lines explain there is no pathology but maybe there is a straightening of the spine which... No, 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 no. You, you, I think you took it wrong. Thus, the lines are not breaking. Even if they are, for example, straight lines, they are not breaking. If the lines are breaking, it means that there is some problem, okay? We are not saying that the curvature of the line, just if the lines are breaking, so you, you can, uh, this video is also being recorded or maybe saved onto the YouTube, so after that you can go and watch that part of uh, x-ray and then you will see what I meant. I suspect talus fracture, then what will be the best way view to get for talus? TBU teller, it is a proper magnified view for the talus. Okay. And uh, you can also go for an ankle view, AP view. AP view is best for talus, teller dome, and lateral view uh, or oblique view for the talus body. Okay, okay, okay. Where is, can we use any modality on the patient right after x ray? Yes, we can use any modality immediately after x ray. We can apply TENS, hot pack, short wave dithermy, microwave, ultrasound, anything at all. Okay, thank you very much for comments. How, can, how we can differentiate osteoporosis and osteomalacia? Uh, I think this is again, if you want to differentiate osteoporosis and osteomalacia, you need to go for appropriate tests, okay, and clinical uh, requirements. For example, for osteoporosis, we need to go for the bone mineral density scan, BMD scan, or sometimes referred to as the DXS scans. So for that, go for that 
and you will find whether what is the t value so if the t score is abnormal there is a reference range written to it so you can find that a patient is having osteoporosis for osteomalacia uh, this is from rickets and osteomalacia you know uh, in osteomalacia it is in adults and rickets is in children so it is due to the deficiency of vitamin d so again the appearance of the bone is totally different it has a bit more shiny appearance uh, no rough appearance uh, like a normal bone i hope i try to uh, answer the question you can also search this online okay and uh, let's think good okay 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 thank you looking forward okay so how to differentiate between the radio positive cartilage and fat tissue uh, of course you 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 understand and we all know that this particular site has cartilage for example try to find that part in your own body and think for a second okay what it is and then you you will surely come to know that it can be cartilage because cartilage is radio lucent not radio opaque it is radio lucent as compared to bone and for as compared to fat cartilage is again radio lucent because fat is more denser as compared to cartilage cartilage is about 65 to 85% of water can dexa scan is suitable for all types of bone disorders no we cannot say for all bone disorders of course for let's say if somebody is having some cancer or some other problem or infection so we don't consider dexa as a gold standard of course for every particular pathology in your mind that is the reason in the beginning i told you that you need to you know uh, rely or you need to combine your x rays with your clinical investigation or with your clinical uh, you know wisdom because that will help you some of you have uh, told us thank you very much dr md nazmul haq pt uh, i believe you are from bangladesh uh, uh, my my heartiest prayers for you guys and i really appreciate for your uh, you know uh, viewership thank you for attending this webinar some of you have asked uh, me to conduct uh, webinar on an mri or some somebody have uh, requested for 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 the webinars on the common clinical conditions of course i can do these things but because uh, of my phd because of my job and clinic it is really very difficult for me to uh, to carry on with these activities uh, of course i i can do that but you know the only reward i want from you is to act in the most professional way you can so that is that is going to be the biggest reward for me being a teacher so uh, in how much time oblique it depends on the, you know the the healing of the fracture depends on so many factors age of the patient gender and so so many things else and thank you very much dr shafak altaf uh, i believe you have watched whole of the webinar thank you very much for for your comment and uh, i believe that this webinar might have helped uh, our fellow professionals from from different countries even from pakistan and uh, all of you you are in in whatsapp group uh, of course i i restricted the whatsapp group just to uh, you know limit the questions but if you have any question you can ask me i will consider your request on mri and for other of course i i run these programs this program was or this webinar was free of cost and it was pro bono but of course uh, when i conduct sessions there are some parameters that we need to consider so if you have any particular question or if you want any any particular you know session on any particular uh, topic you may ask me and we can come to a point of mutual understanding i believe it's time thank you very much for joining me today and thank you very much for your nice comments and uh, please stay in that whatsapp group because i'll keep on posting if there is any upcoming free webinar if there is any upcoming video you can uh, go to my youtube channel you will find a lot of videos about electrotherapy about exercise therapy there are more like technical videos that you will never find on the internet right now i'm working on on this uh, project that is basically displaying the waveform of different currents and uh, i'm very eager to teach these also so if you have any interest in electrotherapy we can you know uh, definitely i can help you understand those concepts thank you very much all of you guys uh, i believe it's time uh, because i have to meet my family you know give time to my kids and 
my family thank you very much once again if you have any question please you can contact me directly on my whatsapp i'll be looking forward for your feedback your questions and stay blessed khuda hafiz